Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white artifact deck called Dances with Dragons, as one of the build-around cards in the deck is Shimmer Dragon. This is one of those cards that appeared in the Brawl decks, so you don't actually open it in Eldrain Boosters, so to my knowledge the only way of getting it is just by crafting it. But we do get a pretty sweet card here, 6 mana for a 5-6 Flying Dragon, and as long as we control 4 or more artifacts, Shimmer Dragon has Hexproof and we can also tap two untapped artifacts we control to draw a card. So as long as we meet the requirement of at least four artifacts in play, Shimmer Dragon is very difficult to interact with and will also start drawing us a ton of cards. And the goal of the deck is to try and get as many artifacts in play as possible for Shimmer Dragon and then uh, leverage all those extra artifacts for extra card advantage. And then the other win condition in the deck is also one of the namesake cards here. Dance of Demands, X a white and blue for a sorcery, saying return up to X target artifact and or non-aura enchantment cards, each with converted mana cost X or less, from your graveyard to the battlefield. And if X is 6 or more, those permanents are 4-4 four, four creatures in addition to their other types. So once we get to the late game and have at least 8 mana, we can cast a giant Dance of Demands, getting back a whole bunch of artifacts from our graveyard and turning them into creatures to help us win the game. And a lot of artifacts in the deck we can easily sacrifice once we're ready to cast a big Dance of Demands, like Golden Egg and Guild Globe. We can just sacrifice those to add mana so they don't even cost mana to get in the graveyard on the turn that we want to cast a giant Dance of Demands, so we can uh, set that up nicely. And then uh, the rest of the deck, we've got a lot of artifacts, as you can tell, and most of them also draw cards. So the deck is pretty consistent at assembling those artifacts and eventually finding Shimmer Dragon and Dance of Demands. So let's go over the entire deck here. At 2 mana, we've got some removal in artifact form, Glass Casket. When it enters the battlefield, exiles a creature an opponent controls with convert mana costs 3 or less until the casket leaves the battlefield. And important to note, in matchups where the opponent doesn't play any creatures that we can exile with a casket, we can still play it just to have an extra artifact in play, to maybe give uh, Shimmer Dragon Hexproof or provide an extra artifact to draw cards with. Then we've got our four copies of Golden Egg, which draws a card when it enters the battlefield. We can sacrifice it to gain life, or sacrifice it to add mana on the turn that we want to cast a big Dance of Demands. Then we have four copies of Guild Globe, which is very similar to Golden Egg, although we don't get to sacrifice it to gain life. We've got our two copies of Dance of Demands. Usually casting one copy is enough to win the game, but uh, we do have two in here since sometimes we do risk milling it over with Emery, Lurker of the Lock, which is our next card. A nice legendary creature that costs one mana less to cast for each artifact we control, so we can often cast it for just a single blue mana. A 1-2 Merfolk that when it enters battlefield puts the top four cards of our library into our graveyard, so also helps us fuel Dance of Demands by putting additional artifacts in the graveyard, and that also fuels the ability of Emery where we can tap her, choose an artifact card in our graveyard and cast that card this turn. So it gives us a nice bit of card advantage as well, since we can often, for example, sacrifice a golden egg and then get it back with Emery to draw an additional card and maybe gain a bit of life or just add mana. So the addition of Emery in the deck also gives us a nice bit of recursion in the late game. Then we also have the full playset of Azorius Locket, which might seem like a bit of a strange inclusion as it's not typically a card that sees a ton of uh, constructed play, but it fits perfectly into this deck since it allows us to ramp into a turn 4 time wipe, for example, if we're up against aggressive decks. Also lets us play a turn 5 Shimmer Dragon, since of course 6 mana is pretty pricey, so getting it down early is important, and usually even if we play the Shimmer Dragon on turn 5 with Azorius Locket, we still have enough time to get those 4 artifacts in play to give Shimmer Dragon Hexproof, and then we could also potentially sacrifice it to draw 2 cards and then get it back with Emery from the graveyard, but for the most part it's just a nice artifact that sits in play, ramps us, and then later also draws us additional cards with Shimmer Dragon in play, and we can tap the Locket for mana the turn we play it, which is quite useful since we can often play Locket and Emery in the same turn, or in the later turns play Locket and another one of our 2 mana artifacts in the same turn, so it's it's uh, quite mana efficient. And the reason we're playing Azorius Locket instead of, for example, Midnight Clock, is that the Midnight Clock can be a little bit awkward in this deck, since you often do want a nice stocked graveyard for your Emery's and your Dance of Demands, and the Midnight Clock will eventually, even if you don't want to, uh, sacrifice itself and shuffle your graveyard back into your library, and uh, we often don't want that to happen, even though sometimes it can come up where you draw so many cards that you risk decking yourself, and it would be useful to have a Midnight Clock to maybe prevent that from happening, but for the most part I found Azorius Locket to be a lot more consistent and reliable in this deck. 
And then we also have the full playset of Teferi Time Raveler, which of course is just a very strong individual card, makes it difficult for the opponent to operate at instant speed, gives us a bit of interaction against creatures, but can also bounce other things. But it also helps us set up an end of turn Dance of Demands, which of course is a sorcery, but with Teferi's Plus we can cast it on the opponent's end step and potentially avoid any sweeper effects, so we can attack and kill the opponent right away with all the 4-4 creatures we make. So it does have a lot of neat synergies in this deck. We can also bounce our own artifacts or enchantments to maybe get another draw effect from a golden egg, for example, or maybe even an Arcanus Owl. So it does a lot of cool things in the deck besides just being a good card. And then we have the full playset of Arcanus Owl, a nice 4 mana 3 3 artifact creature bird with flying, so it also counts as an artifact for all the artifact synergies in the deck. And when the Owl enters the battlefield, we can look at the top 4 cards of our library, reveal an artifact or enchantment card from among them, and put it into our hand. So usually a nice 2 for 1 when it enters the battlefield, gives us a nice threat to pressure the opponent with that we can also get back with Emery, or get back with Dance of Demands, so just does a ton of work in this deck. And then we also have 3 copies of Time Wipe as our sweeper of choice, return a creature we control to its owner's hand and then destroy all creatures, and our deck usually doesn't have a ton of creatures in play, so we can often pick up the only creature we have in play, and uh, most of our creatures also have some nice enter battlefield ability, like the Arcanus Owl or Emery, so it's actually sometimes good for us to pick it back up and then destroy all opposing creatures. And uh, of course, sometimes even with a Shimmer Dragon in play, we're forced to time wipe to reset the board, but then we can just replay our Shimmer Dragon afterwards to help us close out the game. So just an all-around great card. And then the mana base, pretty straightforward. Because of Arcanus Owl, we don't get to play any colorless lands, so we just have 9 planes, 9 islands, 4 hallowed fountains, and 4 tranquil coves. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with, um, I guess, a keepable hand. We've got enough draw effects here that we should be able to hit our land drops and cask it for early interaction. Could be up against a blue-green flash deck. As we see a Spectral Sailor, so... Of course, resolving Teferi would be the dream. Alright, Gilded Goose instead, so maybe it's like a foods slash uh, flash hybrid. Still wouldn't mind trying to resolve Teferi. Alternatively, we could go Guild Globe into Emery or Casket into Emery, which is also decent. Let's try Caskets. And what to exile? Probably still the Sailor. Goose could let my opponent play like a turn for Nissa, which of course would be problematic. But we're probably losing to a Nissa anyway. So let's get rid of a Sailor. Suppose it could be a Brazen Borrower end of turn, fair enough. Bounces Emery. Alright, another Casket. So we'll lead with Emery. And if this gets countered, we can maybe resolve the Fairy. Frilled Mystic. Feels bad to bounce the Frill Mystic, but uh, need to protect her to Fairy as well. Alright, I guess uh, don't have to worry about my opponent playing anything end of turn now. No, I am not making this up. If we're afraid of a Nissa, we could exile the Goose, so they can go Goose make a food, play a Nissa. Kind of strange that they didn't decide to just play the Borrower in their turn. So that does imply that they actively want to make food. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. Just lock it and then cast it to Goose. And then if they don't draw land, they can play Nissa. All 
All right, they did draw the land, so do we see Nissa? All right, an ambusher instead. Fair enough. Still a pretty good card. Let's try this. So I have six mana thanks to the lockets. So I could go locket into owl, or I could guild globe, hoping to find maybe some interaction for this ambusher. Although I guess I wouldn't be able to cast a time wipe even if I draw it. I guess Guild Globe is fine. Finds the caskets. And finds... I guess an egg. So I'm willing to chum block the ambusher here just to keep our Teferi around. So this would be a good turn to draw Shimmer Dragon, as my opponent can counter it. So we can cast get the Borrower, but then um, the Fairy still dies unless we find something else. So I guess we'll start with uh, an Egg here. Hope to draw a Time Wipe. Perfect. Can even play it in the opponent's turn and not get punished. For what it's worth. I've got it. All right, so let's try and find that dragon. Not our globe. I guess we can play this, but then I can sack the locket, and that might be better at this point. Or I guess I can just go locket into globe and then sack my locket next turn. Arcana sounds good. Always have the option of bouncing my own artifacts as well here with Teferi, but uh, against a flash deck I think we just want to keep Teferi at a healthy loyalty. Opponent finally deciding to run out their Frilled Mystics. They've had enough. Can't blame them. Sadly found two Shimmer Dragons, and I believe we also saw one earlier. So now all the Shimmer Dragons are at the bottom. Can maybe hope to win with the Dance of Demands. There's one left in the deck as well. Casket doesn't exile Frilled Mystic. So I guess we'll bounce one of them. Nah, back up to Fairy. Don't need to play it right now. Just okay trading Owl for Mystic. Alright, opponent keeps Mystic in hand this time. Don't really get their logic, but uh, not complaining. We know that the Shimmer Dragons are at the bottom, so there's no real risk of milling them over with Emery at least. Maybe the Dance of the Mans. And then Emery can provide a steady stream of Arcanus Owls from the graveyard. Can sack my Locket here too. Alright, so all the good cards are still in the deck.
And I guess we can sacrifice the other locket end of turn. So we're in decent shape, just need to find a finisher at some points. Preserver, alright, maybe that was the reason why I didn't play the Mystic. But the Casket does answer Preserver nicely. So we'll sign the lockets. And there's a dance, so we can set that up as well here. Um, I guess I'm still gonna casket the preserver. I could wait a turn on this dance, to be honest. Not in a hurry. Can plus the fairy, get back owl. Find another casket, and then next turn go for end of turn, Dance of Demands. Sacking all these uh, golden eggs and guild globes as well if we want to. We're fine with the trade. The key moment in this game was definitely top decking that uh, time wipe. Opponent hasn't really been able to recover since. So now it should be pretty straightforward. Just plus, pass a turn, cast Giant Dance of Demands. That's more like it. So my opponent's going to be suspicious of this Emery not uh, getting back an Owl. Alright, this is maybe going to prompt a concession here, we'll see. I'm probably sacking too many artifacts here, but I don't want to waste time counting artifacts in my graveyard, so we'll just sacrifice all of them and then dance for 9 here, which is the maximum. No risk of uh, decking myself. And that should be lethal on the way back. Alright, there we go. Could also decline with these Arcanist Owl triggers, but uh, might as well. And there's all the dragons at the bottom of our library. So as it turns out, sticking at the ferry against the blue-green flash deck is pretty effective. Alright, we'll turn them all sideways. And my opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with... Uh, a keepable hand. Need a third land for Locket, and then Locket provides the fourth mana for these two owls. We've got Casket and Time Wipe as interaction against creature decks. So don't hate my uh, chances. Alright, perfect. What are we up against? Aspro Control, maybe? Or Dance of Demands, so Thought Erasure probably taking an Owl. Casket and Time Wiper are probably not going to be very effective in this matchup. I guess they could also take Lockets to try and kind of mess with their mana situation a little bit. But Owl is kind of the 2 for 1 that the control deck is usually more worried about. 
quasi duplicates, so this is probably not a Dance of the Man stack, instead something else. I'm intrigued. Tombbound Lich. Alright, so maybe a Reanimator deck. It looks like it, as they discard Agent of Treachery. Alright, well, I could play Owl and then kind of just offer the trade. If they have a Blood for Bones, I'm forced to probably Casket to Lich to prevent that from happening, so I think that's what I'll do. The good news is that Agent of Treachery doesn't work against our Shimmer Dragon if we can give it Hexproof. But uh, if they can steal a land here in the early turns, that can also be quite good. Or I guess in this case they would probably go after the Locket instead. Surin, sure. At least the Lich was exiled, so they can get it back with uh, Surin. So they're just gonna plus. Locket, so I can go Locket into Owl here. Find a Guild Globe. Sadly, one dragon goes to the bottom. So can they reanimate Agent of Treachery here? It looks like it. Bond of Revival. Alright, so they've got a hasty Agent of Treachery. Probably going to be forced to Time Wipe to prevent a Quasi Duplicate from copying the Agent. Although I guess they can also now get back Agent with uh, Surin, which is kind of annoying. So let's see what we draw first. Caskets. Not too useful. Yeah, I guess we'll Time Wipe. So my opponent could get back Agent and then copy it with uh, Duplicates. Steal two of my permanents. Kenrith as well. Alright. It's pretty good too. So we'll need to find another Time Wipe here. Shimmer Dragon would be decent. Amory's okay. But they can just steal that with Agents. So I guess we'll play Amory. And then sacrifice lock at end of turn. That also means that uh, if they were somehow trying to steal one of my lockets, I can sacrifice the one they're trying to steal instead. And I wouldn't really have much mana left over this turn if I sacrificed it, so might as well do it end of turn. Also plays around uh, Thought Erasure from my opponent, which they already showed us. But now they can also use Kenrith to reanimate the agents. So we're not in a great spot here. But we can potentially draw our way out of it. Especially with the dragon. So, Emery's not getting back anything from the opponent, at least. Is a useful so, Teferi could bounce Kenrith to minimize how much damage we're taking, since we're also slowly dying to all these uh, Sorin pings. So, we'll start there. Play Emery. And I could casket the opponent's Emery as well here. Don't know if that's super relevant. But then again, I don't know what else we're trying to exile with this. Maybe not our Tombound Lich at some point. So I guess I'll still keep it in hand. They can also kill Teferi with uh, Sorin, which can also damage Planeswalkers. 
Charming Prince can flicker agents to steal something else. So, yeah, once they get the first agent going, it's uh, pretty difficult to deal with. There's a Thought Erasure. Takes the caskets. So pretty much need to top deck Dragon or Dance of Demands at this point, I think. Dance would be pretty effective. So Soren kills the fairy. What a mess I've made. Alright. And Agents probably steals the other Amri. That's not it. So I could uh, sack lock it now. It leaves me with still uh, four mana afterwards, which is not a lot. So I'm probably better off doing it end of turn again. For the same reasons as last time. Another prince. So I'm guessing that's gonna start stealing my lands. Have they seen a dragon in the graveyard? They have not, so they don't know that they need to prioritize maybe getting rid of my artifacts. Take three. Could always sacrifice a golden egg to gain a bit of life. Let's sack the lockets. And there's our dragon. But is it too little too late? Might be. I guess I can play dragon, draw a card right away, maybe keep up two mana to sack the golden egg. But if I sack the golden egg, then. Uh, they can quasi duplicate agent stealing dragon, which is pretty much game over. And yeah, I would be forced to sack the egg just to stay alive if they attack with everyone. So it's not great here to play dragon, sadly. If we could Teferi and dragon, then we would have been in reasonable shape. But maybe I'll draw something useful here. Alternatively, I can Teferi Bounce, but that also doesn't leave me in a great spot. Alright, we'll pass. Yeah, if we found a Dragon a turn or two sooner, then maybe we could have uh, stabilized. Deputy can also get rid of my... Artifacts here. I can sacrifice. Yeah, I can sacrifice this one so they don't exile it. Although I guess it's kind of good if I did survive, because then I could Teferi Bounce Deputy and draw some more cards. But yeah, I could sacrifice this one and then sacrifice the egg. But uh, I think this means we're dead since they can simply. Get rid of the Shimmer Dragon by copying the Agent of Treachery. They just have one more card in hand they can discard and attack with everyone. And even if I gain three up to nine, we're still taking more than enough here. So yeah, maybe with a couple more artifacts in play, maybe finding Dragon sooner, we would have been able uh, to stabilize in time. Still a pretty interesting game, so... Good game's opponents. Time for a drink. Uh, 
All right, we're on the draw. Reasonable hand against aggro with double casket into Teferi. And yeah, a turn one gutter bones is a good target for a casket. So it looks like maybe a Mardu aggro deck here. Crusader. We'll be exiling that instead. Casket can also exile a Regisaur if that's something my opponent plays. Alright, I guess given that we drew another Casket, I'll use one here. Otherwise, there's also an argument for just using Teferi Bouncing Crusader. Just in case they do have a Regisaur. And there it is. Alright. So again, I could bounce it with the ferry. It's probably fine, just kind of commit them to spending three mana replaying it. They can kill the ferry with the gutter bones, but we don't really mind. Uh, get rid of it. I could just play an owl, but uh, don't want to have my opponent ember cleave me and take a million damage. Ideally, we draw land for shimmer dragon next turn. Otherwise, we get to play owl. Dragon won't quite have X proof, but my opponent shouldn't have too much in the way of removal. Maybe a murderous rider. Right, there's ember cleave. So we're still taking six here. Drew both our dance of demands. Owl into owl. So are we just chum blocking here? Drill bits probably takes one of our dragons. Takes the owl instead. So I can take six uh, and then next turn try and trade my dragon for a gutter bones, which sounds pretty bad. Uh, how far along are we for this dance of demands? If I draw a line, I could get back double owl as well. The downside of chomping is that we won't have four artifacts for dragon. The upside is that I preserve my life total. And I also set up the Dance of Demands. So if we don't draw land, we're probably just dead. Lock it. So yeah, we're just taking six next turn. It's a bit unfortunate that we drew four over five kind of expensive uh, curve toppers. But I guess we did also draw the caskets, which were good. So yeah, I can dance for X equals uh, 3, but that doesn't get back Owl. Locket doesn't do anything. So we're just dead here. Alright, we're on the draw. With an okay opening hand. Caskets and a ferry for interaction, Amory to hopefully find some more action. Facing Scour Baron's plane, so maybe a life gain synergy deck. Looks like it. Yeah, like the caskets, I kinda wanna keep to answer an Ajani Sprite Mate or the Aerialist. But um, it's probably still worth it to play it. And then we'll have to decide between Teferi and Emery next turn. There's a Pride Mate and a Hawk. Alright, I guess Teferi Bounce Pride Mate is fine. 
or I could bounce the hawk and there's a chance the pride mate can't grow because yeah, if I bounce pride mate and my opponent can replay pride mate before attacking make it up to a 3-3 and then it trades for my owl whereas if I bounce the hawk there's a chance the pride mate stays at 2-2 and an owl actually has a good block on it so it's definitely an interesting choice Replace a hawk. Child of Knights. Alright. So technically, if they don't have removal, the owl would be a good blocker here. So we'll try it. Find another owl. Something like an Oath of Kaya would be quite good. Angel Vitality instead. So we're just trying to grow the Pride Mates. Shimmer Dragon's gonna be quite good too. Yeah, I might be able to wait a turn on bouncing the Pride Mates and instead just play Owl plus Emery, try and get some traction. Casket is excellent. And I'm okay playing defense. If we ever find Time Wipe, of course, we're happy. We're missing double white. But the Locket can provide it. Right, so 4-4 four, four Angels of Vitality. Could just play our Dragon. Don't hate that. Doesn't have Hexproof quite yet. Instead I could uh, use Emery, get back like a Golden Egg. Casket, uh, Pride Mate or one of the Angels. That's also reasonable. Now let's go with the Dragon. It feels like if they had removal they would have used it already. And I can just start drawing cards with my dragon instead. And we've got a backup in case they do kill it. Another Child of Night, sure. Alright. I think we're in good shape. And there's a time wipe in case we need it. Alright, so where do we start? I guess we want to get this locket in play. And then... Could play the fairy bouncing... The pride mate anyway, in case they gain life. And pass a turn, and then end of turn we can draw two with the dragon. Don't really mind losing Emery. And the longer I can hold on to this time wipe, the better, I think. So I'm not in a hurry. Opponent is at 34. Do have to keep the Ajani Planeswalker in mind, which can uh, do some bad things to us if my opponent's at 35 life. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. So... I could casket one of the angels and then start attacking with my dragon. To lower their life total bit seems reasonable. Also close to setting up a big dance of demands. I 
I don't know if I want to play another Shimmer Dragon quite yet, just in case I do want to pull the trigger on a time wipe. Just pass for now. And then we can set up maybe an end of turn Dance of Demands. Although we don't have too many artifacts in the graveyard, so it's going to be Revenge instead. Okay. So Podon doubles their life total up to 59, and we're down to 9 life. Well, I'll happily chum block and then set up my time wipe, I guess. So I guess I can chump with Emery, or I can maybe get value from Emery first. I guess this is fine. Suppose I could have maybe chumped with Emery so I could get in a bit more damage with Owl first. Although with my opponent at uh, 59, I don't know how much that matters. So... Yeah, I guess I can attack here with a dragon. Use Emery to get back Owl. And then still time wipe. Just gotta be careful with how I type my mana. And then pick up our Shimmer Dragon again. Alright. And then next turn I can maybe go for the end of turn dance. Alright, opponent has given up. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. The locket also fixing our mana potentially here. Could be up against Monorad, which is not a very good matchup for us, sadly. Amber Hauler. Alright, so next turn I could go lock it into Emery. They can kill it with the Ember Hauler, then we can play an Owl. Hopefully limit how much damage we take here in the early turns until we can drop a Hexproof Dragon. Well, a Legion War boss. It's pretty good. I guess my opponent could be on like a Goblin Tribal deck as well. So having a Time Wipe here would be pretty nice. A locket does allow for turn 4 time wipes, which is of course quite important in these aggressive matchups. So we're taking a million damage pretty much. So maybe I just need to hope I can top deck a time wipe next turn and just chum block with Emery right now. Or I can take the extra 4 damage and just to put Emery back in my hand after the time wipe. Although I don't know if that's necessary. So I think we chump and hope for a top deck. We've got a three outer here. Yeah, that's not a time wipe, sadly. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand has two of our kind of more expensive cards, which is not ideal. But um, I don't know if I can really mulligan this either. We'll try it. We're lacking some interaction, so this hand definitely suffers against a more aggressive deck. Alright, Emery's not bad.
Yeah, let's try and play Teferi here, on the off chance that my opponent's playing a flash deck and they can't counter this. Before they get their three mana counters online. It's gonna be a gross peril. Alright. Looks like a team of reclamation, in which case I think I'm okay plussing to keep the ferry out of shock range. Don't worry. Because keeping the ferry in play against the reclamation deck is very important. And yeah, my opponent just concedes. Unless they have like brazen borrowers to bounce the ferry. The ferry prevents them from uh, floating mana and casting a big expansion explosion on their end step after having uh, extra mana with the Reclamation, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with, uh, I guess, a reasonable hand, some interaction with Casket and Teferi, some cantrips with a Guild Globe to eventually set up this Dance of Demands. Turn one Wildwood Tracker, so an aggressive green creature deck. I think I'm okay waiting to maybe casket something bigger, maybe a Yorvo, as opposed to the Tracker. Lobster Beast also works. So... Could the Fairy bounce the 1-1 one, one token? And then uh, casket the Beast next turn? I guess it's fine. So I could go Locket into Caskets. Could have also tried to exile the Tracker so the Beast can't attack, but that's a risky proposition. Opponent did have a Yorvo, although Time Wipe is perfect here. Might be able to wait a turn to kind of get more value from it. Could even play the Owl, although I kind of want to hit my land drops instead. But Owl maybe forces my opponent to overextend more than the Cantrips do here. Right, could also just Casket Yorvo instead and uh, wait on the Time Wipe. Vivian, alright. It's a good one. To the largest hydra. Nature is beautiful. You picked the wrong fight. So that definitely makes the time wipe a lot uh, less effective than I would have liked it to be. So do I even cast it? Probably. Otherwise, they can keep hitting me with a creature that gets counters from Vivian. Yeah, they had two follow-up creatures. Can casket one of them, but the other one's still gonna hurt. But we are slowly setting up a Dance of Demands at least. This'll be fun to watch. See first if we can maybe find another time wipe. Amory's not bad. Might want to casket the Pelt Collector instead of Harpooner, since this can eventually trample by itself. But I guess Harpooner hits a little harder right now, and Vivian still gives Trample. So I guess I'll get rid of Harpooner. So next turn we can Dance of Demands for X equals 6. And... I guess not too many artifacts in the graveyard besides the Owl, but I can sacrifice Golden Egg, the two Guild Globes. My, my. How you've grown. So we'll take five. Ooh, Great Henge. That's a good one too. Another Guild Globe. 
don't really have time to play that one first. So yeah, I think it's time to dance. So we'll sack this for mana. And I do still need to cast this for x equals 6, but I don't need to return 6 permanents. So just 4 for now. Cask is good. And then we'll hit Vivian for 1. Enemy. Hopefully we can dodge a creature this turn. I'd get out of the way if I were you. Not a Vivian, alright. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. That's not too bad, I guess. This'll be fun to watch. And my opponent concedes, alright. So they did take a couple mulligans at the start, but uh, they still had a functional draw, and then we were eventually able to stabilize with a big Dance of Demands, even if it was just uh, returning four cards. So yeah, the deck is definitely not the most competitive deck out there, but a lot of fun and definitely capable of doing some unique things between the Shimmer Dragon and uh, a Dance of Demands deck that doesn't involve Doom Foretold. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.